Hello, Mrs. Neumeyer here, and we are ready to start our next six weeks of science. Our science projects this time all have to do with probability. Now, you might be wondering, why do we study probability? What is it, and what are we going to learn? Well, probability is the mathematical study of chance. So it has to do with math, mathematical study of chance. And when we think of chance, we think of like, what are the chances, right? What are the chances of something happening? The likelihood that an event will occur. Now, sometimes we see this expressed as a ratio. Sometimes you hear it as expressed as a, a percentage, like mm, there's an 80% chance that it might rain today, right? Um, you've probably heard words that we use when we talk about probability, things like how likely it is something will happen. How unlikely? Is it possible? Is it impossible? Is it certain? So there's some words that we use in our vocabulary, and whether we realize it or not, we're talking about probability. And we're going to be learning in our grammar these next six weeks, the science grammar about origins, like the, the idea of how did our earth and everything in it come into being. Uh, there's different theories and different ideas about that. And so our study of probability will help us as we're learning about origins, the probability that of which one of those might be true. When we study um, creation, when we study other ideas of how the earth began, which one is the most likely to be true? we don't ever know for certain because we weren't there, right? But we study and we learn and we use probability to determine what are the chances that this could or could not have happened. Specifically, when we talk about creation, we want to know how likely is it that something may have either happened just by chance or that we have a creator that created it all. Now, Here's a book I want to refer you to, and this is called It Just Couldn't Happen. Now, it used to be in the Challenge A curriculum. Um, for those of you who have um, challenged students, it used to be in the Challenge A curriculum. It no longer is, but I still recommend getting a hold of a copy of this book because it's really cool to learn about all the different things in our world and whether or not, the what is the probability, right? how likely it is that these things just happened by chance or that there may have been a creator who created these things. Now, when we look at our eyeballs, like when we studied earlier in science and our science project, we can look at our, our world and see, wow, there are a lot of things that are complex about our bodies or about the way our eye works. Remember, we talked about all those different things. If we can just take one body part, let alone all the others, of how all those things could have come together to either just happen or were they created to be as specific and complex as they are to be able to help us interact with our world. Other things we can look at are like the sun and how close it is or how far away it is uh, sorry, the earth, how close or far away the earth is from the sun. And if we were to just be a little bit closer or a little bit further away, our world wouldn't be able to exist. We, life would not be able to exist on our planet. The plants, the atmosphere, everything about our planet would either burn up or it'd be too cold if there was even just a tiny bit of difference of where it is. So we have to wonder, could that have just happened by chance? Could that have just happened to be there just in that right exact place for life to have began? Or our eye, did that just happen by chance? Or things like if we study our body even more, like the DNA and how the DNA is in our bodies, or if we look at complex different organisms and how they work, could those things have happened by chance? Well, Let's study probability these next few weeks, and you'll start to understand what we mean when we say 
the chances of or the probability of something happening or not happening. And today we're going to be starting with our first experiment, um, so to say, of using a coin. Now, have you seen at the beginning of a sporting event, like a football game or a soccer game, when they're trying to determine which team goes first, they usually, or sometimes you may have seen, they use a coin toss to decide which team goes first. Well, that's what we're going to be um, experimenting with today. We're going to be doing a coin toss. So I'll have some pennies. I have one here. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working in partners to flip our coin to see how often heads and tails appear. So let's talk about a few different things. Now, when we do a coin toss, there are outcomes. We also refer the, to them as events. So an event is the outcome or a group of outcomes for the event. Like the event is the result of an action. So if I flip this coin and I get tails, that is my event, that is my outcome. So here is the coin. Now you've all seen pennies before and I wanna show you. So this is what we refer to as tails. Now, this side's pretty obvious with the Lincoln on there as heads. So if you flip it and that's what's up, there's heads. If you flip it and this is what comes up, we call it tails. So we're going to be doing that and we're going to find out how often we get heads and how often we get um, tails. Now, when we refer to this we, we probability, we usually refer to it as a desired outcome. over the total. This becomes a fraction. So when we have a coin, we want to determine how often do we think it might be heads. Well, if our desired outcome is heads over the total number of outcomes, possible outcomes, we would write it as a fraction like that. So Let's say the total number is how many, right? How many outcomes are possible with a coin? Well, there's tails and there's heads. Two. Two possible total, we call them total, two possible outcomes that we're going with. Now, the desired outcome is either heads or tails. That means there's if, we want, if our desired outcome is tails, there's a one out of two chance we're going to get tails. What about heads? What would be our fraction? One out of two chance that it will be heads. Now, for some of the older kids, you can say like, oh, I know that equals 50%. There's a 50% out of 100 chance that it will either be tails or heads. So when we look at this, we can see, oh, wow, there's an equal chance that it could be tails as heads. Our ratio is the same. Now, if you were to say, could it be both? Is there a chance that it could be both heads and tails at the same time? No, there isn't. So that would be zero. That would be if it was both, zero chance, like 0% chance you're going to get both at the same time if you have one coin, right? But is there a chance that you're not going, that you aren't going to, this is what you aren't going to get either. Is, uh, is there a chance that it will always be both heads and tails? Well, or heads or tails? Yes, there's a two out of two chance that it will be either heads or tails. So there's 0% chance you'll get both and there's a 100% chance that you're either going to get heads or tails. The desired outcome, if it's tails, it's one out of two. If it's heads, it's one out of a two. So that means there's an equal 
number of chances that we will get heads or tails. Now, we're going to be flipping it one at a time, and I want to introduce one more word to you. An independent. Each flip is independent. That means every time you flip it, there will still be a 50% chance that it'll be either heads or tails. What that means is, if I flip it and let's say we get tails, does that mean the next time it's gonna be heads? Not necessarily, right? There's each flip is independent of the other. That means it doesn't, doesn't matter what you flip the first time, it has no potential effects on the next flip. Every time is independent. And so there's a one in two chance that you'll get heads and one in two chance that you'll get tails every time. All right, so here, let's talk about our experiment today. I have a worksheet that will help us keep track of our flips. Looks like this. All right, and what we can do is keep track of each flip. So if, you have, if you're there with other students, if you're in class, you can pair up and one of you will flip five times and the other one of you will flip another five times. So there'll be a total of 10 coin tosses. And this will be how you can keep track of how many or, or what you get when you flip. So let me show you how this will work. You can also do a prediction. See up here it says, I predict that heads or tails will turn up most. Well, from what we just talked about, is there one that's more likely than the other to have more? Scientifically, no. We can just make a guess because it's fun. But based on our scientific numbers, it should be equal because there's an equal chance that we would get heads or tails. Let's see if that's how it turns out. All right, so we'll start by flipping our coin so the first person can flip your coin. Or if you're at home doing this at home, you can do all 10 flips on your own, either way. All right, so we'll flip it, and I got tails. All right, so I'm gonna color in the tails, saying that is the one that we got on the first flip. Now, you can color it, you can circle it, you can make a check mark, whatever is easiest for you to keep track. This is just a fun way to keep track. If you don't have this worksheet or don't want to print it out, no problem. Just keep track on your own. You can make tally marks and just keep track of the flips as you go along. All right, so flip number two for me is tails again. All right, I'll check that one off. All right, flip again. Tails again. All right. Now, do I have more? Is there any more likelihood that I'm going to get heads this time or is tails? Now remember, 50-50 chance, it could be either one, right? It doesn't matter that I've already got three head or three tails, this could be either one. So let's flip it. Tails again. Wow, all right, let me flip it again. Oh, this time it's heads. All right, so I've got, so far I've got one, two, three, four, four tails, one heads. All right. Now I'll go ahead and do it all 10 times just to see what our results look like. And then you guys can do it. Heads, tails, heads, tails, and tails again. All right. So let's count up our results and put them here at the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven tails. One, two, three. Oops, I put it in the wrong section. Three heads, seven tails. All right, that's my total. So you guys can do it on your own and see what you, what you get for your total. Now, if we were to do this lots and lots and lots of times, even a hundred times, it will be pretty close to 50-50 most likely, right? Based on what we know about the probability about it being either heads or tails. See what happens for you when you do it just 10 times. Do you get what I did? Do you get close to that or do you get closer to 50-50? And then add up your entire class and see, 
did you all, if you collect all your data and pull it all together, did you get close to that 50-50 mark? The more and more times we were to do it, it would be likely that we would get closer to 50-50. Those are the chances. All right, so enjoy working on this and doing some coin tosses, tallying your results and comparing them to what the rest of the class did and then combining all your data and see if that is you come up with a different result. All right, bye-bye.